So I'm John. Here's what I'm doing today. This really crappy kitchen light is going to be turned into these nice recessed lights. So quick little disclaimer, I am not an electrician. If you haven't followed this channel, you should know. I have no idea what I'm doing. This video is not meant to be advice. It's only a way to document what I am doing. I'm probably going to do some things wrong, so don't follow what I do. Consult an electrician if you don't know what you're doing. Unless you're dumb, like me. So anyways, this is actually a really cool vintage light, but it is really dark in here with this. And the other half doesn't want to keep it, so we've been trying to figure out on what to do to replace it. And we decided we are going to go with recessed lights, LED recessed lights in here. We're going to probably do four corners. That is the plan. I'm not opposed to maybe doing a fifth one back in here or maybe pushing the fourth one back. We'll figure that out. So here's the issue. It's not a three-way switch. What does that mean? That means this switch operates it as well as this switch right here. So that means the wiring's a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna have to take this off and see what we're looking at up there. Basically a three-way switch means in addition to the wire going up to the switch and to the light, there's also a wire going from that switch to this one. If it's in the walls, that's fine. But a lot of times they'll run it up through there and that essentially becomes a junction box for it. The plan is to remove this all together and move the light. So it depends if there's enough slack where I can just move the whole thing into the junction box of the new light or if I need to leave a junction box here. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Now this isn't my first time doing electrical. I replaced my outlets and light switches in a couple rooms yesterday. So that's not too bad. The old light switches, pardon the mess, we're putting stuff together, were these ugly, loud 1958 light switches and we've since replaced them with these quieter 2021 light switches. So first things first, we're gonna shut off the power. We want number eight. Let's see if that's the one, the kitchen counter, garage light. These are terrible. This is terrible. I'm trying to figure out what these are. Uh, so we're gonna see if that's it. Always, and this is advice, this little bit right here, always shut off the power at the breaker if you're doing any electrical work. You don't wanna be zapped. All right, back to the documentation and no advice. Um, lights off, so it means to shut the power off. It's not doing anything. <clears throat> I like to shut it off at the switch too, just so I have that extra barrier. Now, since I shut off the electricity in here, is the fridge running? It is, so that means the outlets are separate from the light. If the outlets were attached to the light and that fridge was not running, you don't want your fridge just unplugged, you'd run an extension cord to plug the fridge in, in another room or something like that, just so you still have power going to it. Let's take this light apart. I could repurpose this as a dinner plate. No, that would be gross. Somehow there's paint inside of it. So up here, that's interesting. My guess is they put that up so the lights reflect better. It's also the old incandescent bulbs that's never been replaced. Uh, so let's see. Looks like some set screws up here. I really feel like aluminum foil in here is a bad idea. And there we go, comes right down. It's just held on by the paint. So I'm gonna disconnect the wire here and oh, we might have a bit of good news. So we're gonna pull these off, remove the light and take a closer look up there. Now before you start touching the wire nuts, you wanna get yourself a little tester here. Make sure there's no power going in here. It's green, that means we're good to go. Let me show you what it would look like if it was not, if there was power going through. See? That tells you there's power going through. This also has a handy little flashlight. This was, I think like 25 bucks at the store and it's a quality one. I, From what I'm reading, you wanna get a quality one, not cheapo. So here's what we got. We've got the hot, the hot which powers the light, the neutral which sends the power back. This is probably the travelers they're called, which connects the two light switches. So this needs to stay in place. 
So the question is, can I move it? So I don't, there might be enough where I can move it over here. Just move this whole thing over here. I think I'm gonna need to go up in the attic to see what we're looking at. <clears throat> um, and I really didn't wanna do that. I have yet to ever even go into the attic of this house. So I guess we're going up into the attic to see what we're looking at. So we've got a few options. Ideally, I want all of this moved right here to the first light or right here to the first light, one of the two. Um, where, why aren't we focused? There we go. So that's what I want to do, but because that's there, we're probably not gonna be able to just move it. I was planning on just pulling the wire back and cutting it, but since it's a three-way switch, I don't know that we'll be able to do that. So option two is to leave this as a junction box and just put a nice white cover over it and leave those connected. And then we'll run from the hot and neutral to the first one. Option three is to completely redo it, which means pulling new wires up from here, which should be done anyways, because this place isn't grounded. So we're gonna need to eventually rewire the whole house. So it'll be a head start on that. I don't know if that's gonna be on my skill set or not. Um, so those are basically my options. Of course, I could always make it so it's no longer a three-way switch, but I don't wanna do that. There is one other option. I could put a light here. So we do four on the corners and then a fifth one right there. That is a possibility as well. And then all of this can stay here. Basically these two wires, the travelers that are connected with the wire nut need to be in a junction box. It could be a standalone junction box here with a cover, or it could be in one of the lights. Let's see if we can get up into the attic. So the attic access is in the garage. Seems pretty straightforward. That chimney is the opposite side of the kitchen. That pipe coming up is right where the stove is. So it should be pretty easy to get to. One little problem is I'm on the top of my ladder here. So I'm gonna need to go and get my taller ladder to get up here. I'm also gonna wear a mask when I climb up because I don't know if that's gonna be asbestos. And there's also a whole bunch of junk up here. Not sure what this is all from, but uh, anyways, we're gonna climb up here. I just need to go and run and get a bigger ladder. So I've got my taller ladder here. This is the one I was using. This is amusing. Just in case you were wondering, you can't wear high-heeled shoes on the ladder. So, oh, hit my head. There's a light up here. I'm wondering where that switch would be. I wonder if it's that. It's probably the circuit that I shut off though. So I'm digging down. This is the top plate for that wall. And here is our wire. I think I should be wearing a mask up here. So if that's the top plate for the wall, this is probably a wire going into the garage. Boy, this is like a treasure hunt. And then this is the vent above the stove. Let's go back a little bit. Let's see if maybe it's further back. I think I am gonna run down and get a mask. So I'm starting to think this might be beyond the scope of my skills. So we've got this coming in to the, to the light. This is that first switch. There's the things. But then we have nothing going that way towards the other light, but we've got two coming back this way. And I'm not sure what they're for. They could be powering other things in the kitchen. This one. And when you do this, make sure to put the insulation back when you're done. Otherwise, you're going to have cold spots. So this wire comes this way. Oh, this is really hard on the knees, too. And continues towards there. Maybe towards the bathroom or something. So. Boy, this is complicated. I'm starting to wonder if this is beyond my scope. So for reference, I found this box that was kneeling about here. There's one wire going back this way, presumably to that. There's another wire going this way, which I'm assuming is going to either be to that outlet or this light. And then there's another one going that way. I don't know why. The only thing I can think of is it might be coming down to this. It has to be that actually. There's a vent stack right behind us, about three feet off the wall, so it's probably coming down right about here. So, we need to keep those all connected. That's the thing. So that might kind of alter the plans. 
it might be the point where I have to keep this junction box here. Whether it's a junction box or I put a light there. Um, I'm starting to get itchy from that fiberglass. Um, so I still don't see one going to that though. So that's the next question. How does it get to there? Unless maybe it's routing behind here to it or something, but it should be connected right to that. Although, you know what? These might actually be connected together instead of up through here. And then these extra wires are going to these other circuits. That could be it too. I might need to get a contact tracer to try and figure out if any of these wires are going down to here. So I've decided this is beyond my skill set. So I've got two options. I can make that a junction box and run it to four, or I can make that a light. So I'm trying to play around with it. I put some tape. I didn't measure these to make sure they're right. I just put them up about where they look, where I would like them. I'm gonna measure before I have final spots. But so we got this area here. We would have two above there. We have one in the center and one off in that corner. I feel like this corner doesn't really need it because there really isn't much going on here. And that one would give you light on the stove and a little bit more back here. I'm thinking that's the way to go. And then this will be a light. That's what I'm thinking. Um, when I was looking up there, all that wiring was tight. There's no wiggle room to shift this over. I would love to shift this over a couple feet, but there is absolutely no wiggle room. So the other option is to make this a junction box and put one in the corner here, and then we'll just cover that up, which I'm starting to like that idea more. So maybe I'll go that route. So we'll put a light here and what we'll do is we'll basically run the wiring from the first light to connect to those two and then we'll button them up in there and then we'll just put a decorative, it'll just be basically a white circle there. It'll look kind of like a blank plate that you would have where a cable used to be or something. I think that's the way to go. So now that's gonna look something like this and then that's just gonna be covered up. I think I like that better than trying to mess around with that. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so now we're going to want to measure off how we're going to do these. These two are easy. We'll have the same distance in on both directions, in on both directions, no problem. Now, because we have this bump out here, this one's going to be closer to the wall than that one. So I'm debating, do I want to set that back a little bit or do I want them to be perfectly in line? I don't know why this thing keeps wanting to go out of focus. So. We can have this one set back in a little bit. We can have it over that way a little bit. I'm, okay, here's here's kind of what I'm thinking. This one, I should have centered right on the stove. So right where the center of the stove is. We'll put that one up. Um, and then coming off, I don't know if we're gonna have it further back than this one or not. So we can start with that. So here's what I did. I put this line up here that makes these two even. And I measured it off of here. So that's a straight line. These two line up perfect. Um, and then using that, I referenced 33 inches and right up here, 16 and a half, which is half of 33. This is the dead center of the oven, roughly. It's not an exact science. So we're gonna put it in line with this line. Now we have to figure out how far off of this wall. So we got tape up here now. This is gonna be the placement right here. It's 16 and a half inches from here, which is those. And 24 inches from there, which is right between these. That's 48 inches. So I'm gonna put one here. This is just to show you how close I was from where I was eyeballing where I wanted it to go. Now 24 inches is gonna put you basically right up against that. So this one's gonna have to come out a little bit more. I'm thinking maybe just 12 inches out and then however far this way we're doing with that one. I'm also using this calculator, blog.recesslighting.com. Uh, I found it. You basically put in the layout you want and your measurement and it tells you where you should put them. So I'm going to do the other three like this. So I want to be 22 inches off of this and 22 and a half off of this. So this one we want to pull 22 and a half off. Let's start with that. All right, we're all set up. I've got marks on each of these tapes. So this one, this one, and this one are 22 inches in in one direction, 22 and a half in on the other direction. This one sets back a little bit further to be centered on the oven and centered between that space. And then that's just gonna be capped off. So I think we're good to go. Now I have to drill the holes, run the wire, and uh, connect everything in. So first we need to make a trip to the Home Depot to get some stuff. 
well, I need to run a wire from this box to that spot. Um, and I was gonna connect those two white wires to that and the black wire to that. So I'm gonna need some wire nuts for that. And then we'll be able to just cap that off. Uh, maybe touch up the paint a little bit. So in order to do that, I might need to go up into the attic once more to run a wire from there to there. And that should be all that I need to do in the attic. I'm gonna try to do it without climbing up there. One more thing, I need to figure out how much wire I need. We're using 14-2, means two wires plus a ground, and it's 14 gauge. Um, I measure just roughing from here to here, to there, to there, and to here. It came out adding a foot on each one. It came out to 17 feet. Um, I might not have added a foot. I just kind of rounded up to the next foot because remember, we're gonna have to have wire hanging out. That said, they come in 25 foot length. So you can buy 25 feet or 50. So I'm gonna get 25 feet. It should be more than enough. I should have some extra afterwards. So here are the lights I'm putting up. Uh, these are, it's about a hundred bucks for this set at the Home Depot. I got them from work for almost nothing. Um, <clears throat> now these are color changing lights. And what that means, it's really just the brightness. Also, you can get a hole saw. That's the appropriate size. I was able to actually borrow that one. So this is what it looks like. You've got four of these junction boxes and four, these are hooked together, four of these really slim lights. And then, so you're gonna wire into the junction box and then you'll connect the lights with that. And then it just clips into the drywall up above. Now a couple things. Uh, let's see, where is it? Now this is something I wanna look for, IC rated. What that means is you can put your uh, insulation right up to it. Since we do have insulation in this attic, that's a must for me. So now color changing here, we get three different color temperatures, warm white, cool white, and I guess cold white, I don't know, three, four, and 5,000 K. And you can set it here how you want it. And you can always change it later if you don't like it. I'm probably gonna go right in the middle of that 4,000. Now, when you open this up, you've got wiring here. You just basically push in the appropriate wires. So here I'll want to push in a black one and uh, two black ones here. One coming from the previous light, one going to the next light. The last one on the circuit is only gonna have one. Same thing with the white and the green is your ground. So hot, neutral, ground, easy peasy. Now there are a couple things I need to get. These I'll punch out, I need to get it's a little plastic thing that goes in there just so the wire doesn't cut on the sharp metal. So I need to get some of those. Um, and then I'm gonna need to get some wire. Ow. I really need to move this table because I just banged my head in this. One of these days I'm gonna break one of them. So anyways, I need to get uh, wire nuts for this to attach those to the other wire and run it over. And then I need to get the little punch out things for that. And that should be all that I need, I think. So I'm just kind of guessing here. Hopefully I can make it with one trip to the Home Depot instead of 17, like that plumbing one I did. Uh, but it's pretty much that simple. And then this just gets sit up above the ceiling and then this clips on the drywall. So there's four in this box. They've got a couple more at work that I can grab if I uh, decide I want to put more lights, but four should be enough. And then lastly, I'm gonna need a cover for that. So to cover up the hole, I'm gonna go with this. That's a little nicer looking, but I like it to be flat. So this will be the way to go. 14 to 25 feet. The roll is a lot smaller than I was expecting. Uh, if it's 12 to, if you're on a 20 amp circuit. So I got the wiring, I got a cap. This one was actually cheaper and it's got a nicer beveled end. Uh, it was by the wall covers, the bushings, wire nuts i only need two but you get 30 i think for four bucks or 150 for nine i'm sure i'm gonna need them in the future and then wire strippers lastly i got this it's a little guard to catch all the dust buy this online don't buy the one at the home depot this is a solid plastic the ones online are like a silicone so you can push in and it's tied up against the ceiling the whole time and they're better than this but this is all they have, and I need it now. So this is what I'm using. Please remove your card. So $93 later, starting to look like an expensive project, but I suppose the lights were still free.
Of that 93, 60 of it was two tools, the catch tray and the wire strippers. And I will have those forever. Uh, what else? 20 of it was the, the wire. And then the other, I don't know, 15 bucks was the other stuff. Now, in addition to the tools and supplies I just bought, we're also gonna want this. A couple of screwdrivers, definitely gonna want a voltage meter or tester, whatever you wanna call it, a tape measure, and a whole saw. This is gonna be a more expensive thing. These I think are like 40 bucks, but I was able to borrow that. Oh, and I forgot to bring it out with a drill. So this thing is actually the cutter. That's why it was so expensive. I'm not gonna use this, I'm just gonna return it. So it saves me 30 bucks. Uh, I guess they didn't have the one that was would adapt right into this. I would rather use the hole saw than the cutter. So that's what we're going to do. So I put on my mask, and there's a trick to this. You'll want to watch uh, Home Renovision DIY. He is a great teacher when it comes to this stuff. And he said, put your drill in reverse. And run it in reverse the whole time. So that's what we're going to do. It makes it so it's not going to run all over the ceiling. It's going to be able to, you see how if you run your finger backwards, it doesn't cut in. But if you feel this way, it does. So it's going to prevent damaging anything above, like wires. Now, when you're doing these, you don't need to worry about joists. Because this will fit within the drywall. So we're going to put the bit right here on my spot and just go slowly in reverse. Slowly. Oh boy, that was really dusty. Really wish I had one of those, that worked. But we've gone through, we're down to the insulation. We got a little chip away here. I don't like that. Hopefully that'll be covered up. I went backwards and forwards very slowly, just because the, uh, this is plaster, it's not that great. Not as easy as drywall, but uh, you see it's a nice thick piece of plaster. So the light should fit right in there. I'm hoping these will be covered up by the lip, but definitely good to wear a mask. I might get some glasses on too, because a lot of this went into my face. So now all, everything's going up through there, but there's these knockouts on the sides. I don't know what I can and can't do. I think I might take this down and see if I can go up through the top, just like the others. So it's actually not the top, it's out the side through that. So I'm gonna go right on the next one. I'm gonna use a screwdriver to pop that out. And I'm gonna run my fish tape. That's another tool I forgot to tell you about. Uh, try and get it across there. So maybe we can not have to go up in the attic again. So all I do is push that back, uh, try to get in that direction. I'm gonna reach up there and try and catch it. All right, so that didn't hold itself up, it just fell. Hopefully it didn't break. But we got it down along with half the insulation. Now we're going to attach the wire to that and pull it through. All right, so we have a wire going between them. I learned this thing sucks, don't buy this. But also painter's tape is not what you wanna use, that's just what I have. That actually worked pretty well. Usually you wanna use like electrical tape or duct tape. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of hang out on each end and I'm gonna cut it. All right, here we go. So I left myself quite a bit of extra just because I'm inexperienced and I might need it. Also, I'm not keeping that. I'm gonna either peel that tape off or just cut it. I tighten that back up. I really don't like that, not having a bushing in there, but that's how all of the other wires are, so can't be that big of a deal. Might need to do a little research there. Now, I need to drill the other four holes, or the other three holes, 
I run wires between them, which should be a lot easier because I'm not going through a tight space. I'm going through a six inch hole. One more quick thing. If you're doing this over carpet, you might want to put some tarps down or something. I would not want to have to vacuum this up off of carpet. But uh, that thing would have come in really handy if it was what I was looking for. It's not, and they don't have what I was looking for. But should be pretty good on these other ones. Uh, we'll give it a shot. We'll see what it does. Boy, is this a dusty job or what? So we got all four of them up. Um, I put a drop cloth over the stove because everything can be cleaned, but I don't want to be picking insulation out of the stove. Now, one thing worth note, the reason why these are great, take a look up here, there's a joist right there, uh, which oddly doesn't go to that one. Uh, well, actually, I think that one's set in further because I want yeah, because I wanted to center it over the stove. So there's a joist here. I'm going to have to pop that nail out or pound it in. But that's not a big deal because this will sit right under the joist. So one of the nice perks of doing it this way, of using these LED lights. I decided to put on safety glasses because you can see how much that dust goes right to the right to the face. I got like a plume of dust right into my eyes. And that's why I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm going to get safety glasses. But it is a really dusty job doing this. But the dusty part is over. I am going to keep this on while I'm reaching up and messing around with the insulation and while this dust settles. Um, in fact, I might run a broom over here just to try and pick some of this up. So I did a quick job of sweeping up. It wasn't meant to be perfect. It's just so there's, I'm not tracking it all over the house and it's not sucking into the HVAC system or anything. There's still a bunch on the counters too that I need to get. But, uh, oh, she's gonna love this. Her clothes are covered in it. Um, but at least there's not piles on the floor here. All right, so next step is to run the wires between each of these. insulation so we get the wires all coming out except this one is too short i don't know if i can make that work that is barely sticking out and this also barely sticking out i might have to uh run and get another strand but uh yeah i think i'm gonna run and get another strand because i already need to go back i did some research i need a bushing for that i can't just leave that wire in there so that's the plan now. But it's starting to come together. Holy dust though, this is awful. Now another thing you might notice, I run the wire up as far as I, it seems right. And then I'm just reaching around up there trying to feel it. I even brought my phone up there and took a video with the flashlight on to see if I could see it when I was up there. But uh, we're gonna need another wire for this. This one's too short, but I don't need to run the fish up again because I can just attach it to that and pull it through. So I don't know where I was getting 17 feet because this is a 25 foot strand and we used all of it. Uh, granted, I have quite a bit hanging out of some of these, but nonetheless. All right, back to the store, get more wire. So this is what I need. Now I'm not quite sure what size I need. I know it's less than half. It's probably somewhere around a quarter. So I'm gonna go with the 3 8 just to be safe. That's closer to half an inch. What would 5 16 be? A little over a quarter, I think. Yeah, that's a little over a quarter. That's a little under a quarter. So we'll go under. Better safe than sorry. Now let's see if I need to buy a full 25 foot length or if they've got smaller ones. There we go. Oh, I don't know. So 15 feet is 14 bucks, but for a little bit more, I can get 25 feet. Let's see what that comes out to per foot. No, I'll just get the small one. This is going to be more than enough and uh, I'll probably just end up tossing the rest. Cause that's only an extra 10 feet. 
which is, hold on, let me do the math. So it's like 94 cents and 80 cents. Here's the thing, if I got this at that price, it would be next to three bucks. So I'm just gonna get the short one, what I need. Uh, double checking this the right one, 14.2, we're good to go. So with the return, I got 31 and some change back and then spent another 17 and some change on the wire and these bushings. I need one, there's 35 in here. So I'll probably be good for the rest of my life. So the new wire, I just taped to the old wire. I'm gonna pull through here and oh, 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 hold on, I'm pulling the wrong one. I'm gonna pull through here. And then that's just gonna come right up until we see over here. There we go. We'll give myself plenty of room here. We'll have all that wire left over. Now I just pulled that one up, but not too far. So I should be able to pull it back down. All right, now we are all wired up. Now I'm very fortunate to have this light here on a separate circuit. If I didn't, it'd be really dark in here. So you might want to get a lamp and run an extension cord from another room so you can see. So now it's time to actually strip these all back and start wiring them up. So basically they're gonna connect right into here. So I'm gonna wanna strip enough wire to stick that in. So we're gonna pop out a hole, easily done. You stick a screwdriver in that little slot and twist. We're gonna stick one of these in, which is difficult to do with one hand. So this is so the wire, anything running an electric current vibrates. So this is so the wire doesn't touch the bare metal and uh, short out. So we're gonna wanna do that on each one. We don't need to knock out two. I'm gonna put both wires through the one and then this will just sit above the ceiling. So what I'm doing is I'm removing the outside insulation, just run it down it with a knife and then cut off the excess and then using the wire strippers, cutting a little bit, stripping the ends of the wires. Wires just push into these clips, tuck it all into the box and close it up and we're good to go. This one's done. Now we're gonna do, now remember there's no power, even if I turn on the box going to this because I haven't actually connected it up here yet. So even if the power were on, I'd be safe. Don't turn the power on when you have bare out wires hanging out of the wall though. All right, so that's wired up. Now we're gonna wire the other three up. And then the last one only has one cord coming out because it's not going to another light. Push those in, doesn't matter which side you do it, and give it a pull, see if it pulls out. If it pulls out, it's not seated all the way. If it doesn't pull out, it's in. So a couple things up here. I attach black to black, white to white. The ground, these aren't grounded, so for now I'm just gonna tuck that up there. Um, now we should, I have to turn the power on, but we should be connected to all these. So I'm gonna connect the lights themselves and we'll test it out. All right, and the switch works. They're all on. Now we can change the color temperature with this. Right now we're at 3000K. There's four and there's five. So you can change that just by hitting that switch. Now let's test it with this. They turned off. I'm just trying to make sure I didn't screw anything up with the three-way switch. We should be good to go. So now, because I'm still messing with the wires, even though they're all capped off and connected, I'm going to shut off the power again, push all this up, that box can just go up in the attic, then this will clip on. I'm gonna push those in the box, put a lid on it, and we should be good to go. So this will go up here, and this should snap right in place. Oh, the hole is too small. So I guess the blade was just a little bit too small. All right, after cutting away the edges with a blade, those are in. I also covered this up. There's a little bit of plaster damage that'll need to be fixed and a little bit of paint. That was all underneath the light. That wasn't for me. It's not pretty, it was better than having to do a ton of rewiring. So let's get the power back on, turn them on, and we'll clean up this mess. Power is back on, and there we go. Wow, it is bright now in here. So, we're good to go. This is done, there are a couple more steps. In addition to painting and fixing that little bit there, I have to take the painter's tape down. 
I also need to go in the attic and push the insulation back over them. Otherwise, we're gonna have cold spots here in the winter. But I'm gonna probably do that tomorrow. So I'm gonna clean up this mess and I'm gonna call it a day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I really need a shower. I'm covered in insulation and drywall dust. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. It's amazing how much insulation comes out of those four little holes.